So in this video, we talk about variance and standard deviation. So far, we have discussed discrete random variables. We said that if x is a discrete random variable, we can list all possible values of x, let's say x1, x2, x3, and so on. These are all possible values of x, and probability that x equals each of them is given by the probability mass function, or PMF. Px of xk is basically probability that x is equal to xk. And we defined the expected value of x, e x, e of x, is the sum of xk probability that x is equal to xk. Okay, so that's expected value, and sometimes we show it by mu, and sometimes we write it as mu sub x to show that this is the expected value of the random variable x. So the expected value is a useful statistic. It's some, in some sense, it summarizes the whole PMF in one single number, mu. Uh, so it's a good thing. However, it is not always enough. We need more information about the probability mass function in many situations. So let's look at an example. Suppose that I'm offered to invest $800 in one of the two possible ways. So the first way will give me $1,000 in one year, and the second one will give me either $500 or $1,500, equally likely. The question is, which one of these I should choose? So if I show the money that I receive after one year using the first option by X and the money that I receive in the second option by y, then I can say these are two random variables. Now, x, in fact, is not really random. Probability that x equals uh, 1,000 is, in fact, equal 1. However, in y, I, there are two possibilities. y is either, you know, 500 or 1,500, with probability 1 half, 1 half. So, if I want to calculate the expected value of these random variables, what do I get? Expected value of x is, of course, 1,000. Expected value of y is 500 times 1 half plus 1,500 times 1 half, which is, again, 1,000. So if I look at the, the expected value, I'll get the same number. However, these are completely different investments. And if you just look at the expected value, we cannot distinguish between them. So how do we address this issue? So here we see that the, the difference is that x is always equal to its expected value, mu of x, which is 1,000. However, y is usually, actually, is always far from its expected value. You know, the expected value of y is also 1,000, but y is either 500 or 1,500. So y is far from its expected value. So to address this issue, maybe we could look at, for any random variable x, we, we can look at x minus mu x and see how it changes. In particular, we could look at the expected value of this thing. Let's use linearity of expectation. This is expected value of x minus expected value of mu x, which is equal to, well, e x is just the same as mu x. What is the expected value of mu? Well, mu is a constant number, right? It's just a number. So its expected value is itself. So this is minus mu x, and it's always 0. Now, what's the problem here? The problem here is that if you look at x minus mu x for any random variable x, then in some situations x is larger than mu, in some situations x is less than mu. So all of these cancel uh, out each other. So we always get a 0. So to avoid that issue, what we can do is that we can look at x minus mu x, but we can look at the square. Then, of course, this is always positive, and this expected value is always positive. Uh, and actually, what, this is what we define as the variance of a random variable x. So, here's the definition. So, the variance of a random variable x with mean mu sub x is defined as expected value of x minus mu x squared. So, the variance uh, in some sense, is a measure of how far a random variable x is from its expected value on average. So, in other words, the variance is a measure of how spread out the distribution of a random variable is. How do I calculate the variance? Well, variance is given by expected value of x minus mu squared. Now, what is this thing, x minus mu, squ x minus mu squared? It's a function of x, right? g of x, you can define it as x minus mu squared. 
So in some sense, this is an expected value of a function of a random variable x, and we know how to calculate that. This is basically given by the sum of gxk probability that x is equal to xk, and this is what we call the law of the unconscious statistician, or LODIS. So um, let's do this. Let's calculate this uh, for the two random variables that we mentioned above. So x was equal to 1,000 with probability 1. So of course the variance of that random variable is going to be expected value of you know x uh, minus 1,000 squared. But you know x is always 1,000, so this is always 0, so this is going to be 0. Uh, how about y? Now y had two possible values, 500 and 1,500. So the expected value of y minus 1,000, again, the expected expected value of y was 1,000 squared is going to be, well, with probability 1, uh, so I'm just using the you know, lotus. So the probability that x uh, y equals 500 is 1 half times uh, g of x, which is 500 minus 1,000 squared plus 1 half, 1,500 minus 1,000 squared. And this value becomes 250,000. So we see that now there is a big difference here. The variance of x is 0, but the variance of y is 250,000. Now this number looks a little bit large for us. Note that y you know, was either 500 or 1,500, so its expected value is 1,000. However, this variance is like huge, 250,000. What's going on here? Well, the issue is that square thing here, right? We squared everything. So in other words, the variance, if you look at the variance of a random variable x, it is in a different unit than the random variable x. For example, if x, let's say, is in meters, right, then the variance of x, the unit of the variance of x is in meter square. So to solve that issue, we can easily define a new thing, a new measure, which is called the standard deviation, and that is simply the square root of the variance. So we show it by SD of x or sigma sometimes. So we sometimes show variance of x by sigma squared. Okay, there is one useful formula to calculate the variance and that is this. Variance of a random variable x can uh, be given by the expected value of x, x squared minus, this is mu, mu squared. And, uh, you know, as I said, this is equivalent to the above definition. But sometimes it is easier to use this, uh, you know, formula. So how do we prove it? The proof is very simple. Variance of x, by definition, is the expected value of x minus mu squared, which is equal to expected value of x squared minus 2 mu x plus mu squared. And we just use linearity of expectation here. This is expected value of x squared minus... Now, this, this mu is just a number, so it becomes 2 minus 2 mu expected value of x plus, again, expected value of mu squared, is just mu squared. But what is this e of x? It's mu. So minus 2 mu squared plus mu squared becomes e x squared minus mu squared. And that's what we wanted to prove. As I said, this formula is sometimes useful uh, when we want to calculate the variance. So let's look at an example. Consider a random variable x with the following probability mass function. And the question is, what is the expected value of x? What is the variance of x? And what is the standard deviation of x? So I suggest that you solve this problem before watching the rest of the video. Okay, so let's look at the solution. So the expected value is just simply, so there are three possible values, 0, 1, 2. So k from 0 to 2, k times probability that x equals k, right? So it becomes basically 0 times 1 half plus 1 times 1 third plus 2 times 1 sixth. And this is, I believe, becomes 2 over 3. So that's the expected value. So let's look at the variance. Uh, I use my formula above is equal to expected value of x squared minus mu squared, right? Which is a expected value of x squared minus 4 over 9, right? We just found the mu. So what is expected value of x squared? This is again, we just, we, we just use the law of the unconscious statistician or LODIS. So this is... Uh, Basically, 0 squared times 1 half plus 1 squared times 1 half plus 2 squared times 1 over 6 becomes, sorry, this is 1 over 3, the probability that uh, x equals 1. So this becomes 1 over 3 plus 4 over 6 or 2 over 3 becomes 1. 
So variance of x is basically 1 minus 4 over 9, or it's 5 over 9. And finally, uh, to find the standard deviation of x, it's just square root of variance, which is square root of 5 over 9, or simply five, square root 5 over 3. So the last thing that I would like to talk about in this video is that variance is not linear. Remember, we discussed that uh, expectation is linear, right? So if I'm looking at expected value of ax plus b, I get, you know, a expected value of x plus b, right? Or if I look at, you know, expected value of x1 plus x2 and so on, up to xn, I obtain expected value of x1 plus expected value of x2 up to expected value of xn. So these two say that expectation is a linear operator. However, variance is not. So the question is, what is variance of ax plus b? Right? If I have a new random variable y, you know, I define y as ax plus b, then what's the, if I know the variance of x, how do I find the variance of y? Here is the result that actually states that the variance of ax plus b equals to a squared variance of x. So uh, let me just mention it here. If y equals ax plus b, we are interested in variance of y in terms of the variance of x. Well, let's just use the definition. This is expected value of y minus mu y. The expected value of y. Let me just write it as expected value of y squared, which is equal to expected value of... Now, what is y? y is ax plus b. What is expected value of y? Expected value of y because of the linearity of expectation is a expected value of x plus b. So it is minus a x minus a e of x minus b squared. You know, the b's cancel each other. So I obtain expected value of a squared x minus e of x squared. Because a is just a number, you a real number it becomes a squared times x minus mu sub x squared and by definition this is the definition of variance of x and this is becomes a, a squared variance of x okay so if for example i know variance of x is equal to 2 and i know y is equal to minus 3 x plus 1 and i ask you what is variance of y you simply write variance of y is 9 times variance of x, 3 squared, minus 3 squared, and becomes 9 times times variance, 2 becomes 18. Okay, so that's good to know. And finally, here's a very useful result. We mentioned that variance is not linear. However, we can provide this theorem that says that if x1, x2, and xn are independent random variables, and I define x equals the summation of x1 up to xn, then I can say that the variance of x is equals to variance of x1 plus variance of x2 up to variance of xn. So in some sense, it, it looks like that variance is linear, but this is only true for, uh, you know, a specific case, in, in very specific scenarios. Uh, here we talk about the case that they are independent. So if the random variables are independent, then this is true. And, you know, we, we will prove this later on, but I want to just provide an example to show you how we can use this. So here's an example. So let x be a binomial random variable with parameters n and p, and we were interested in, in finding the variance of x. If you remember last, you know, in previous videos, we found the expected value of the binomial random variable, and it was np, n times p. Just to remind you quickly, the binomial random variable, you can describe it in this way. You toss a coin n times, toss a coin n times, and you are interested in the number of heads. Uh, we assume that probability of heads is equal to p each time that you toss the coin, and you define x as the number of heads. And we had found that probability that x is equal to k is equal to n choose k p to the k 1 minus p to the n minus k. Now here we are interested in the variance of x. So how do we find it? One way is just use the direct definition, you know, the big sum. This is a very, you know, complicated formula. Uh, so we can use this. But there is a much easier way of doing it. And if you remember, we have discussed the idea before 
we can write a binomial random variable x as a summation of Bernoulli random variables x1 plus x2 up to xn where xi is equal to 1 or 0 xi is equal to 1 if the ith coin toss results in a heads so ith coin toss results in heads or zero so uh, if, if the first coin toss results in heads x1 becomes one and so if a, a, the second coin toss uh, results in heads x2 becomes one and so on so if you sum all of them then you are counting the total number of heads so we have n independent Bernoulli random variables Bernoulli random variables is parameter p the probability that x i equals one is equal to p so uh, because they are independent from the theorem above, from this theorem that we just talked, we can write that the variance of x is equal to variance of x1 plus variance of x2 and up to variance of xn. So all we need to do is we need to find variance of xi's. That's very simple because xi can only take two values. So variance of xi is equal to the expected value of xi squared minus e of xi squared. Now, what is the expected value of xi is equal to 1 times the probability that x equals 1, which is p, plus 0 times the probability of 0, 1 minus p. So the expected value is p. So this is p, p squared. What is expected value of xi squared? This is, again, 1 squared times probability of 1, p, plus 0 squared times probability of 0, so it becomes p. So variance of xi is equal to, this becomes p, so p minus p squared, which is p1 minus p. And this is true for, you know, i from 1, 2, up to n. So we are done. So we, variance of x was equal to the summation of variances, as each of them is equal to p1 minus p. So the total variance of x becomes n times p1 minus p. So if x is a binomial random variable with parameters n and p, then the, the, its variance is given by n p times 1 minus p. And previously we found its expected value is equal to n times p. So the point in this you know, example was that we could use this uh, result that says that you know, if two random variables basically are independent, x and y, if they are independent, then variance of x plus y is equal to variance of x plus variance of y. Okay, thank you.